welcome to the new topic under the edges of chemical process utilities and that is steam. Now steam is very important in all the chemical process industries because it can use, be used for the power generation, it can be used for making slurries, it can be used for imparting the heat to any, any equipment etc. because it offers a wide spectrum of uses. Apart from this, steam can be used for the mixing purpose, agitation purpose and steam finds it a very vast spectrum in uh, various operations of chemical engineering. So, we are starting this uh, steam concept and uh, in this particular lecture, we are going to cover about what is steam, why we are using the steam and what is the phenomena through which we can generate the steam and how do we can identify the steam properties. Because based on the various concepts is pertaining to the latent heat, pertaining to the enthalpy, pertaining to the entropy, steam can be of a very various use in all spectrum. Now, steam uh, is a vapor form of wa water and it is colorless, tasteless and odorless. But apart from this, it carries uh, the heat energy. So, steam is used to transfer heat energy from one location to another one. Now, you see that uh, industrial revolution is was it was duly backed by steam engines in way back in 18th century and that was the first industrial revolution. It completely transformed the entire way of thinking of people and it was having the phenomenal effect to the day to day affair of any human being. Now, a question arises that why one should use steam. Now, in this particular um, slide, we have uh, enlisted couple of things which gives you an idea that why we should use steam or why we are using steam in such a broad spectrum in any process in industry. Now, steam is an, a very efficient heat transfer media. See, by virtue of the latent heat, by virtue of uh, the other properties, steam is a very good heat transfer media. Now, we have already developed equipment and expertise to design and install the steam oriented system. I told you that way back in 18th century, the entire industrial re revolution was attributed by the generation of the steam. So, since then we have already developed, we have already designed so many equipments through which we can utilize the properties of the steam. Now, we have a lot of knowledge concerning steam. Trust me, we are having steam table, if you go to the steam table, we have enlisted all the properties which we can imagine in the steam. So, we know a broad spectrum of knowledge with respect to the steam. Above all, because of the variety of thing, because of the cost effectiveness, because of the other variety with respect to the properties, steam one can easily control. We will discuss this particular aspect in due course of time. Now, question arises that how we can create the steam, how we can generate the steam. So, steam is created by adding heat energy to water. Now, the heat energy required to create a steam in basically two form. One is the sensible heat and second one is the latent heat. Very common because it carries the heat and it can be used to transfer the heat from one station to another station. Let us have a brief look about the sensible heat. Now, sensible heat is the amount of heat energy that required to raise the temperature of water from 32 degree Fahrenheit to the boiling point and that is the called the saturated liquid at a given pressure. So, sensible heat raises the temperature of the water and can be sensed with any kind of temperature measuring device. Now, there are maybe certain question rises uh, uh, that what are the effect of uh, various parameters attributed to any process of steam generation. So, let us take that what is the effect of pressure? Now, see if increased pressure, 
then there is a decrease in the amount of latent heat and increases the amount of sensible heat. Usually this, the smarter phenomena that is called the steam table known knowledge, the steam tables allow us to identify all the important properties of steam given either the steam temperature or steam pressure and we are having ready made uh, mathematical correlation through which we can analyze or we can predict or we can calculate the other properties of steam. Now, when we are discussing about the heat carrying capacity of steam, then question may arise is that is heat recoverable? Now, steam is majorly used to transfer the heat energy from one station to another one. It only makes sense that we take the heat energy back out and use it to do work. So, first you create you apply certain quantity of energy to create the steam, then you extract the work and sometimes it discharge the energy and you grab this, this energy and collect the condensate and then again you can reuse all those things. So, the latent heat usually added at the boiler level and that is what we have available to do work in our any kind of equipment. But another thing is when we remove the latent heat, we create the condensate. Remember condensate always possess a an extensive amount of economical value because whenever we are generating the steam through the water, we need to have the water in the purified form and that do cost. We need to perform the demineralization operation, deionization operation just to prevent the formation of the scaling. So, when we remove the latent heat, we cannot create, uh, we cannot uh, discharge the water as such. It needs to be collected and again it needs to be recirculated. But apart from this, when we form the condensate, then there may be a chance of uh, pressure disturbance within the system. So, steam is uh, efficient and economic to generate because water is plentiful inexpensive, available in abundance in several locations. It is non-hazardous to health and environmentally sound. In its gaseous form, it is safe and efficient energy carrier and trust me, it is very economical in this aspect. Above all, steam can hold 5 or 6 times as much as potential energy as an equivalent mass of water. Just courtesy latent heat. Steam is always easy to control because we are having the direct relationship between the pressure and temperature, the amount of energy input to the process you can easily control simply by controlling the saturated steam pressure. Now, this energy whatever you created by the formation of steam, this energy you can easily transfer to any process. So, steam provides excellent heat transfer. When the steam reaches the plant, the condensation process efficiently transfer the heat to the product being heated. Now, question arises that what are the integral part of any steam plant? Because steam generation is not an easy task with respect to the theoretical approach. We need the purified form of water or a purest form of water. When we are manufacturing or we are preparing this pure form of water, again the economic aspect involves. Now, the generation may take place in a boiler, then boiler needs some external source of energy through which the, the water can be at, uh, heated. There must be certain safety norms and once the steam is generated, then there must be a steam distribution network to the point of use and whatever condensate because earlier told you that um, steam once it condenses, it uh, condenses into the form of water and water carries some economical uh, aspect. So, you need to collect the, the, the uh, condensate for its reuse and moreover there must be certain blow down system. 
So, all these things they uh, these make a complete steam modern steam plant. Now, this these modern steam plant because of this direct relationship mathematical correlation which are, uh, which are easily established apart from this all the properties of steam we know. Um, increasingly the industrial energy users they are always looking for maximization of energy efficiency and minimization of a product cost and overheads and that is why they are always intent to recover the condensate whatever being formed in due course of time. We will discuss this condensate recovery aspect in due course of time. Now, here you can have a look that this is the modern steam plant. Here we are having a feed water supply. Now, this feed water supply is again equipped with certain sort of preheaters because usually boiler runs at a very high temperature. So, if we supply the normal water to the boiler, then there may be a, a chance that uh, the thermal breakdown or thermal shock may occur. So, to prevent this, these, pre, these feed water supply tanks, this must be equipped with some sort of preheat devices. Now, this preheating may be either through the heat recovery aspect or may be through the, some of the external heat source. This is the main boiler assembly. We will discuss the anatomy of this main boiler assembly in due course of time. Now, here you see that the distribution steam distribution network where this distribution distributed uh, the um, this distributes the, the steam to the point of use. Here this is uh, the blow down valve or blow down tank. Now, the, the role of blow down tank is that because uh, repeated use of water may create the formation of scale or a sludge. Now, this scale or sludge they do not possess any kind of heat value or heat transfer facilitation aspect. So, these need to be removed intermittently to improvise the energy efficiency as well as the boiler efficiency. So, intermittently these sludge or uh, scales being removed over the period of time through this blow down wall. We will discuss this thing in later part. Now, steam is flexible. Now, steam is an excellent carrier of heat we have already discussed. It is also sterile and thus popular for process uh, use in the food, pharmaceutical and health industries. Sterilization process is one of the example of the health industries. It also widely used in hospitals for various aspects including the sterilization and it is also intrinsically safe. Now, um, when we talk about uh, the industrial energy source, the primary industrial energy source are either process heating, process control, some sort of mechanical drive to generate the power space heating etcetera. So, these are some of the industrial energy sources. Now, sometimes uh, the question arises that uh, how we can classify the steam. Few people say is that uh, okay, we may have some low pressure heating steam maintained at 15 psig. This is used mainly for space heating system and single effect absorption chiller actual code of is more restrictive in this particular aspect. Then we may have a medium pressure steam, it, it is from 15 to 150 psig, basically used in the hospital steam systems, some of the industrial heating. Then there is a high pressure category which is above 150 psig. Now, this is a strictly industrial and power generation application. Now, each class has piping and valve requirements separately. Now, whenever we go for high pressure steam, then obviously there are certain attributing uh, uh, expenses that may go on the higher side. So, increase in expenses which e with each higher class of system. Now, when we talk about uh, the steam system operation as uh, we discussed earlier, there are four different integral part. One is how we are generating the steam, the boiler and uh, feed water supply system, they are the part and parcel. Then there must be a distribution network 
through which we can distribute whatever is steam being formed in due course of time through the boiler to the point of use. Then end use where we are using the steam maybe for the power generation, maybe for the heating, maybe for the mixing, maybe for the agitation etcetera. Then the condensate recovery and the feed water system. Now condensate recovery I told you that it is again very important because of the value or a precious value of water. Now steam is again when we talk about the vital source of mechanical power in various industries. It drives pump, sometimes walls, this help to produce the paper and wooden product, prepare food, heat and cool, large building and institution. It also propel the much of the world's naval fleet and high percentage of commercial marine transport. And uh, remember it is it was also being used for the locomotive purpose. So, still in some countries steam plays a continuing role in railway transportation. Now, steam generators usually we call them boilers because they boil the water and to generate the steam. This ranges in size from those needed to heat a small either building or use in the industrial operations. Uh, sometimes they may produce even 1300 megawatt to 1800 megawatt of the electricity in power generation system. So, enough power for more than uh, 1 million people. Now, these larger unit they deliver more than 10 million pounds of superheated steam per hour. It is roughly 1260 kilogram per second with steam temperature exceeding to 1000 Fahrenheit or sometimes 538 degree Celsius and pressure exceeding to 26.2 mega Pascal. Steam flow rate and operating conditions uh, they are again very crucial and uh, while designing the steam distribution network uh, it is a main candidate of uh, design consideration. Now say from 1000 pound per hour that is 0.1 kilogram per second in one process sometimes use more than 10 million pound per hour in a large electric power plant sometimes from about 14.7 uh, PSIG and uh, 212 degree Fahrenheit in some heating application to more than uh, 4500 PSI and 1100 Fahrenheit in advanced cycle power plants. So, you can see the wide spectrum of steam uses. There are certain complexity associated with the steam generation. That is attributed to the choice of fuel, choice of fuel used like uh, oil or gas or coal and handling of these fuel oil, this add the complexity and a variety of a steam generating system. We will discuss this thing in due course of time. The fuel used in the most steam generator are mainly coal, oil or natural gas. Sometimes nuclear energy also plays a major role in at least the electric power generation area because uh, excessive amount of energy being liberated in, uh, in nuclear reactions and that can be capitalized for the generation of steam and this steam can be used for the power generation. Also an increasing variety of a biomass material and a process byproduct they have become the heat source for steam generation. Now, these includes the peat, wood and wood waste, bagasse, straw, coffee grounds, corn husk, coal mine waste, waste heat from steel making furnaces. Even renewable energy sources like solar, they are being used to generate the steam. Sometimes hospital waste, incineration of hospital waste is also being used as the, the steam generation because it offers uh, excessive amount of heat liberation that can be utilized for the generation of steam through the boiler. Now let us have uh, some fundamental about uh, the steam generation. The basic fundamental associated with the steam generation is the boiling. The process of boiling water to make steam is a well known phenomena. 
thermodynamically instead of increasing the water temperature the energy used to result in change of phase from liquid to gaseous state water to steam. The steam generating system should provide a continuous process for this conversion. Here you can see that is a small steam generator where we are supplying the heat and this is the water level and this is the steam chest and you are getting a steam and we are equipped with the, the pressure measuring device. This is the basic form of boiling equipment. Now, keeping in view of this particular fact, let us go into the details of the boilers. You may recall that these are the locomotive um, engines used for the transportation per, per still in some countries they are in they are in use you can see this graphic this is the small amount of steam generator where the steam is being generated at a specified pressure and it can be used for various domestic purposes so what is boiler the question arises how we can define the boiler boiler is an apparatus to produce steam thermal energy released by the combustion of fuel this is used to make steam at the desired temperature and pressure now whatever is steam being produced it can be used for the producing the mechanical work by expanding it in a steam engine or a steam turbine uh, we can utilize this uh, steam to, to the heating of residential and industrial building very common in developed countries performing certain processes in sugar mills, chemical plants, textile industries, pulp and paper, pharmaceutical industries etc. Now when uh, we talk about very specific definition of boiler then American Society of Mechanical Engineers popularly known as ASME they gave us a broad scientific definition. Now this is a combination of apparatus for producing, furnishing or recovering the heat together with the apparatus for transferring the heat so made available to the fluid being heated and vaporized. Now fluid usually this is the water in this case, fluid is heat contained in the boiler drum called shell and the thermal energy released during the combustion of fuel which may be solid, liquid or gaseous. This uh, thermal energy is transferred to water and this convert water into steam at the desired temperature and pressure. Remember there is a correlation between the temperature and the pressure with respect to the steam. A well known phenomena has been discussed thoroughly in the steam tables. Now heat is transferred from one body to another by means of radiation, convection and conduction, it is our heat transfer phenomena. Now radiation which is the transfer of heat from one hot body to cold body without a con conveying media. Convection, the heat of uh, con transfer of heat by conveying medium such as air or water and conduction, transfer of heat by actual physical contact molecule to molecule, these three are the phenomena. Now when water is boiled into steam, its volume increases about 1600 times producing a force that is almost as explosive as gunpowder. Now this causes the boiler to be extremely dangerous equipment and that must be treated with utmost care and that is why it is called the pressure vessel. Sometimes it is referred as the pressure vessel. The process of heating a liquid until it reaches its gaseous state is called evaporation. So the steam generated by this mean can be used for the power generation, mechanical work or electric power. This can be generated by expanding steam in the steam engine or steam turbine heating. This can be utilized for heating the residential industrial building, various chemical processes etc utilization of steam for industrial processes such as for sizing and bleaching in textile industries. Steam is also used in many other industries like sugar mill, paper mill, chemical industries and so and so on. So the 
thing is that when we call the boiler as a pressure vessel as well as a lot of operations are being carried out within the boiler, then one may ask that what is the objective of boiler because see it acquires the heat from some source, deliver to the wa water, generate the steams at a high temperature, high pressure, distribute it. Then what is the objective of boiler? The objective of boiler are to release the energy in the fuel as efficiently as possible, to transfer whatever the released energy uh, occurred to the water and to generate steam as efficiently as possible. Now see there is a chest, a steam chest which is intimate contact with the water, then there is a need to separate the steam from the water which needs to be exported to, to the plant. Now this is again one of the objective of the boiler. Now where, why this is need to be export? The energy can be transferred to the process as efficiently as possible and as quickly as possible. So uh, a number of different boiler types have been developed to suit the various steam application. There are certain things which are quite essential in the boiler which we will discuss in due course of time. One is the safety because as uh, mm, I told you that uh, uh, boiler is sometimes called the, the pressure vessel. So the boiler should be safe under operating condition because it can build excessive pressure as well as temperature. So it should be safe. Accessibility, the various parts because boiler contains various parts including the safety valve, steam distribution network, water level indicator, uh, temperature sensors, etc. And sometimes because of the repeated use of uh, water, it may create the problem of scaling and you need to uh, maintain all these points, uh, all these things uh, um, repeatedly or intermittently. So the accessibility, the various part of the boiler, they should be accessible for repairing and maintenance. Then the capacity, they should be capable of supplying steam according to the requirement because some, uh, some, some process may require superheated steam, some process may require the saturated steam. So these boilers should be capable for supplying as per the requirement. Apart from this, efficiency is again very crucial thing. Now this should be able to absorb a maximum amount of heat produced due to burning of fuel in the furnace. Now remember this is again very crucial because the per unit cost of steam is always depend on these type of things. Another thing which, which is quite essential that it should be simple in construction so that maintenance and repairing may be easy. Its initial cost and maintenance cost should be as low as possible because ultimately it will produce, uh, by this way it can produce uh, the steam at a lower cost. The boiler should have no joints exposed to the flame because sometimes uh, the thermal expansion may create a problem and the boiler may explode and serious uh, accidents in past occurred just because of uh, this particular lacuna. Now these boilers should be capable of quick starting and loading and that is always desirable to maintain the efficiency of the boiler. Now when we talk about uh, the, the boiler and the uh, boiler they are specifically the pressure vessels. So every country they are having their own boiler regulations and these boiler regulations are attributed to the safety of the workers, to the safety of the nearby people, to the safety of uh, other people, those who may directly or indirectly may get in touch with these kind of a thing. So India again in, in our country, we do have boiler regulation and boiler act. So the Indian boiler act, this was enacted to consolidate and amend the law related to the steam boiler. Now this Indian boiler regulation was created in exercise of the power conferred by a section 28 and 29 of the Indian Boiler Act. Now there are certain advantages of this Indian Boiler Regulation approval. As to complete uh, the system of manufacturing, they need to have 
of IBR approved material. So, the risk of explosion because again reiterating that boiler is a pressure vessel. So, the risk of uh, an explosion can be minimized. Now, as approved by IBR, there will not be the legal complication which in turn ensure the peace of mind that is the broad spectrum of IBR. The IBR design and construction compliance ensures longer la tube life and lesser breakdown because sometimes uh, because of repeated use and scale formation and sometimes corrosive uh, uh, material involvement, the tube may get brittle or deformed and that may create a problem and it may lead to the boiler explosion. So, the IBR approval is essential with respect to the design and construction. The overall safety assurance, the Indian government certified third party inspection under the edges of IBR. Now, there are various criteria for Indian boiler regulation approval uh, like uh, uh, the, it is not necessary that every boiler needs the IBR approval. Say if uh, we are having 3.5 kilogram per centimeter square and less than 10 inch I internal diameter the IBR uh, approval is not required. But if you are having uh, uh, um, in between 3.5 kilogram per centimeter square and greater, uh, greater than uh, um, 10, uh, 10 inch ID, then IBR approval is required. So, these are, these are the conditions with respect to the pressure and internal dia over which IBR approval is required or not required. Now, IBR steam boiler means any closed vessel exceeding 22.75 liters in capacity and which is used expressively for generating steam under pressure and include any mounting or other fitting attached to such vessel which is wholly or partially um, under pressure when the steam is shut off. Now, IBR steam pipe means any pipe through which steam passes from a boiler to the prime mover or other user or both, if pressure at which the steam passes through such pipe exceeds 3.5 kilogram per centimeter square above atmospheric pressure or such pipe exceeds 254 mm in internal diameter and includes in either case any connected fitting of a steam pipe. Now, let us talk about uh, some boiler specification. The heating surface is any part of the boiler metal that has hot gas of combustion on one side and water on other side. Now, any part of the boiler metal that actually contributes to making the steam is heating surface. So, the amount of heating surface of the boiler is expressed in square meters. Uh, this is uh, the typical boiler um, rating or boiler specification like it is mandatory to make the uh, mention that boiler make an year, maximum continuous rating, rated working pressure, which kind of the, the boiler it is and which kind of the fuel which we are using may be fuel oil, may be gas, natural gas or may be uh, some other materials like coal etcetera. The larger the heating surface a boiler has, the more efficient it becomes. The quantity of the steam produced is indicated in tons of water evaporated to steam per hour. The maximum continuous rating is the hourly uh, evaporation that can be maintained for 24 hours. Now, um, let us take because see uh, we are having various choices based on the Indian boiler regulation. Now, in this particular lecture, we have discussed about the various aspects of steam, different properties of the steam, how we can produce the steam, how steam is beneficial, what are the integral part of a steam generation system as well as uh, small amount of uh, detailed knowledge about the boilers, what are the boilers, basic definition of boilers as per the ASME standards. And for uh, your convenience, we have enlisted couple of references. If you wish, 
you can go through all these uh, references for further studies. Thank you very much.